Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 20th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, first, a quick update on Cigarette and the good news, at least as of me recording this here Sunday evening, is that there is no real news regarding Cigarette. So no new exploits. And actually, the news overall has been dying down a little bit about Cigarette. Still pay attention to it. Uh, keep patching your systems if you're not done with it yet. John uh, Bambanek uh, did publish a quick post uh, with a couple of ways how you may be able to detect exploitation. And on Friday, Cloudflare suffered a significant outage lasting about half an hour. And of course, with Cloudflare's business being in part DNS, some people, of course, immediately pointed to cigarette, but appears to be totally unrelated. Cloudflare did publish a very detailed and I think actually really good blog post about the outage, what exactly happened, and essentially it went back to a router misconfiguration that caused the outage. The outage wasn't complete, but did affect major parts of Cloudflare's network. And of course, with so many websites relying on Cloudflare, it did affect a large number of high traffic websites. The lesson here is that even cloud services go down occasionally and this is not the first time. So if you are relying on cloud services, then certainly you have to be ready for this. And of course, once they are down, there isn't really much you can do other than hope that they'll get it fixed pretty soon, which Cloudflare to some extent did. And pretty regularly, I do talk in this podcast about vulnerabilities in routers and particularly in web-based admin interfaces of routers. So kind of nice, I guess, in some ways to see today's blog post by Guy who has detected exploitation of one of these router vulnerabilities, so-called zero shell Linux routers in a honeypot. One problem with these vulnerabilities is they're really extremely easy to exploit. And I think this example shows this really nicely, how really all the attacker had to do is add a URL to download the Trojan to the actual router's URL, and then a command to start that downloaded Trojan. This particular Trojan turned out to be a member of the Mirai family, at least according to a virus total, which of course started out with just brute forcing passwords, but in the last couple of years has added more and more of these web application vulnerabilities to its repertoire to compromise routers. Then we got a great little diary by Didier talking about Sysmon's recently added feature to record alternate data streams. We have talked about this before, but Didier is now showing a real neat example how this is useful. One of these alternate data streams that you do have on Windows is the Zone Identifier. This is added by web browsers whenever they download a file. And this is why, for example, you get a pop-up if you really want to run this particular executable because it was downloaded from a website. The nice thing about the zone identifier is that it does include the URL where the particular binary was downloaded from. So by cataloging these zone identifiers with Sysmon and looking for anomalies, you catch essentially the people that download random binaries from probably untrusted and unauthorized locations. And then hopefully this will allow you to block exploitation in time. This is of course also really useful in forensics and incident response if you're coming across a compromised system and in environments where you just can't prevent users from downloading and running arbitrary binaries, which of course would be the preferred solution. And talking about blog posts, not on the Storm Center website, but on our Show Me the Packets website for the intrusion detection in depth class, I put together a little 
blog that was inspired by actually teaching uh, the class last week. I'll be teaching it again uh, this uh, coming week about forgotten TCP dump options because there are a lot of uh, options that are really useful, I find, but that many people haven't heard about even if they do use TCP dump regularly. So uh, if you're interested, uh, well, uh, take a look and uh, maybe you have another option or so that I should have mentioned. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening. If there is a story I should have covered, uh, please let me know. Always interested in what listeners uh, of this podcast are sort of worried about and uh, what you are reading. Uh, just don't uh, send me any kind of marketing material. That's it. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.